What are the 10 safest altcoins to 10 extra money right now in crypto? Well, what defines safe in crypto? Unfortunately, not even Bitcoin defines safe. I'm going to try to define safe in terms of what altcoins I would be looking at right now if you strategically wanted to 10x. And there is a bit of nuance behind this, by the way, because if you're someone new to the space thinking every coin should 10x from here, Kyron, this is pretty easy. No, it's not. You're led down a very dangerous path, my friend, if you think like that. So let's get into it, guys. I've got a lot to cover in this video before we get into these 10 altcoins. And again, remember, you have to listen to this first part because if you don't, you're not going to likely know why I've chosen these 10 altcoins over maybe one other one I've spoken about in the past. Don't forget, though, before we get into this, hit that like button, help support all I do, and subscribe. That will allow you to achieve all your crypto goals in this bull run. Now, I'm picking these old coins for a few reasons. Number one here is we're trying to find ones that are going to be in the right areas at the right time. What am I talking about here? Finding the narratives, the areas, the niches, gaming, AI, DPIN, account abstraction, DeFi. These are the areas that make up crypto. We're trying to find the ones that will likely overperform, right? In pink here, that will do well. Some narratives like account abstraction, for example, less powerful, less interesting, and it objectively is, it will likely do worse than something like gaming, AI, DPIN, or again, an overperforming narrative in general. Now, here is a select few narratives from June, and I've compiled this to show you as an example, these things do move independent from one another. Yes, as Alan Grant once said, yes, they do move in herds. That applies for this as well, right? We can see here that these are some of the narratives. By the way, these aren't every narrative, but this is again taken from June, which we can see that these narratives do have their pumps at different times. Now, a narrative, of course, is just simply a group of altcoins popping off at that specific point in time. This is usually, usually, like I'm talking 95 plus percent of the time when these altcoins have their massive all-time highs. So we're trying to find the ones in the best areas that will perform the best. And I've got proof that this is actually how the market works within when these narratives jump up and move all together, all these different coins pump at the same time. We have ones that outperform each other. I've shown this many times before. Over here, Solana in purple and Avalanche in the last cycle, they had a disparity of a 50x. So one of these 25x, one of these 77x. So within the best areas, Really, we should be trying to find the best coins, which is ones I've picked out, I believe, today. But most importantly, if we just pick the right areas, they should do at least a 10x from here anyway. And if you're still like, what's he talking about here? Prime example is gold, right? If you're trying to find gold, you're going to look in the places where gold is abundant. Simple as that. If you go and try to find gold in the middle of nowhere, you might get lucky. But chances are, if you don't know geography or rocks, you're not going to do very well, okay? You have to find, you're much better off at least, finding the areas that are abundant and finding hidden places around there. It's as simple as that. The chance of literally striking goal is much better here, 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 and here than it is in the middle of nowhere. So like I said, we have a bit of an indication into this because part of our private community, we track in the bull run cheat sheet, all the different narratives in the top eight, nine, and 10 areas. So we've got them all laid out here. And so we already know kind of which ones are performing the best and will likely perform the best based on, I guess, popular opinion. What are most people talking about so far? So with that being said, I've singled out the 10 narratives I do want to talk about, uh, which is AI, DPIN, real world assets, gaming, layer one, layer two, interoperability, DeFi, and data availability, as well as Oracle. Okay, so these I strongly do believe will do well, they either have done well in the past or they've proven to do well in this bull run already. Plus, because this title, we're looking for the safest old coins to 10x, not coins that could 10x on the dangerous side. For example, Solana. Solana could 10x, but that is likely going to be a point in time where there's going to be no liquidity. So if this was Solana's chart, for example, let's say that theoretically Solana could go to, if this was $1,000, $1,000. Why would you risk that if that's the price prediction when you should be looking for coins, smaller market cap, still the same high potential where, like for example with HBAR, you can sell well and truly down here within the green zone where there is going to be buyers when you're looking to sell. If you're trying to sell, no one's trying to buy. Everyone else is trying to sell. While the price might spike, you're likely not going to get out anywhere near the level in which you intend. So with that being said, we are looking for these coins as well. Coins that will well and truly do more than a 10x. Also, high market cap, so less risk. We're not trying to find middle low caps here. Again, the point is to be safe. 
So we offset risk with that as well. And also proven to be powerful and or unique. They can't be any old coin. Again, they're in good areas, narratives, but they need to also be quality coins themselves, proven with either, again, recent price action, come down a little bit on the dip, or also have some promising updates to be um, you know, coming out over the next few years. Taking the AI spot is none other than ASI, Artificial Super Intelligence. Now, this coin is a conglomerate between three different cryptocurrencies. We have AGIX or Singularity Net, Ocean Protocol, and also Fetch AI, but they work together. There is one coin. Everything is full guns blazing within this one project. Now, most of the supply is out, which is fantastic. This will keep all the FDV shillers nice and happy which again, I do not like, by the way, because it's a load of nonsense. But either way, it's good in that case as well. We can see here, price is $1.20. Price went up to about $3.30. Now, previous price action should never be an indication of future price action. But again, we have a look at some of the updates coming out here. These guys are building the website. Finally, these guys are actually finally starting to push ASI and actually make some pretty good connections. One of these connections is pushing themselves onto Cardano. I released this news a couple days ago, which is where they'll be able to build our application specifically because Cardano, while maybe not the most popular layer one coin by any stretch, you can't deny the technology is solid, no downtime, and it's again, highly scalable to a degree. So they obviously uh, want to build on a solid foundation, basically. No point building on Solana that goes down every two minutes. So that's a great choice. Also over here, they have also uh, leveraged the BNB Greenfield storage system, right? Decentralized storage system. Now, I don't like the BNB network, of course, for a whole host of reasons, but this is a genuinely cool product with a whole bunch of insane partners come together to help build this on the Binance network for the Binance network. So these guys are branching out. I think ASI is going to have a bunch, and I mean a bunch of updates coming out here very soon. Plus, you can't deny if you're a crypto lover, if you're a cypherpunk guy or girl this is the best thing for ai in my opinion okay democratizing decentralizing ai going up against the big centralized giants that in of itself is a strong meme if they choose to push it as for a 10x i'm not getting into price predictions but yes obviously i think this coin can most definitely 10x from here even more our next coin is a deep in project here render now this is deep in ai but of course we're going to fit it into deep in because i don't think you can go wrong with render coin is currently at five dollars it recently picked, picked as high as fifteen dollars basically so this is a tremendous price and again just like asi we have a really good fdv uh, ratio on here okay most of the tokens are out and it's now deflationary as well it has a really cool mechanism in which you need the render token itself to actually use the network which goes to burn the token. So all in all, guys, you can't complain. And let me be honest right now, this is a great post over here from my good friend Tokenizer going through some of the main reasons why, uh, you know, Render is a quality coin. Recognition from top three tech giants, mainly including NVIDIA, world leaders in their advisory team, 10-year track history of success and a pioneer in computer graphics. Literally a pioneer talking about distributed uh, graphic rendering well before this whole crypto thing was really popping off. It's insane, okay? Now, this is some of the you know information here in terms of the connections made with render. I've gone through this on video after video after video. So if you're new around here, you're going to see more of it in the future. Of course, render definitely makes it to this list. No dilution, nothing crazy, just pure. Token uh, unlocks over time due to emissions. Now, what about real-world assets? Massive narrative I think you need to be exposed to. I am exposed um, multiple times over. In my opinion, who wins in this case? Well, I'm actually going to pick Ondo. Goldfinch was a definitely a contender. So was Hedera H-Bar, but I think Ondo is the clear winner due to the fact that it's primarily focused on real-world assets, therefore expelling HBAR, and it's also a larger cap, so it's a bit safer, excluding, of course, Goldfinch. 62 cents, I mean, you can't complain with that. Now, as we'll see here in a second, a lot of people complain about the FDV, but I'll show you why it's nothing to be concerned about and why it's a bunch of nonsense. This is slowly starting, starting to turn into a I hate FDV video, so I will refrain from bringing this up too much more. I can't say for certain I won't, but Ondo makes this list, guys. They are doing so much on the back end, okay? Yeah, it's borrowing, it's lending, it's a basic real-world asset project, but because they're so heavily tied now to BlackRock in terms of everyone's talking about, I just think simply the fact that they're leveraging the build-all fund, but it's now become a meme and it's going to really benefit Ondo. So we can also see here they have some massive connections. And again, it's not always what you know in life, it's who you know. The who's make the connection, the who's move you up in the world. It's simple as that, right? They have a lot of the who's, essentially, right? We have Nathan over here. He has worked before at Goldman Sachs. We've got people in the vice presidency position for the institutional side of BlackRock being Katie. Maybe she was one of the reasons why they ended up working together so soon. 
We have Ian over here, Head of Digital Partnerships at McKinley, and the rest is all there for you guys to see as well. It's very important you follow me on Twitter. I come in with information like this all the time. It's what you need to know in this crypto space to stay up to date, basically. Now, we have the token unlock chart here for Rondo, and I kind of got the attention to bring this up because I had a um, gentleman down here, Av, on, on my post, pretty much saying he's concerned about the unlocks to happen coming up here in January. Now, what you have to understand is when the tokens are sent out, this is going to go for a few more projects on this list, is that they need to be uh, sent to a certain entity, if you will. Now, if that entity receiving the tokens isn't inclined to sell the tokens, then you don't want to consider that as you know the the token being unlocked and it's going to you know be sold instantly, and therefore bringing the price down. If we actually remove all the people who won't sell, ecosystem growth, protocol development, and the community sale because they already have their tokens, you'll notice. The private sale only have a small little unlock over here, barely anything of the supply at all. They have their unlock here, and that's about it, really. And even as it occurs over time, they only have a maximum of just under 13%, you know, way over here in 2030, essentially. So there's nothing to really be concerned about, guys. The sell pressure will likely come as it does because most people are uninformed on this and therefore panic sell before the day of the event. On the day of the event, usually these projects pump because people realize, oh, nothing actually ended up happening. I'm going to buy back in quickly. So... In my opinion, nothing to be concerned with Ondo. There are cases, as you'll see soon, where that does apply though. Guys, next up is a gaming project here. Of course, it's Immutable. I own Immutable like many of the coins on this list. I put my money where my mouth is literally. Now, Immutable is a great coin. It's obviously a layer two on Ethereum, leveraging you know Polygon as well and for ZK use cases. But this coin is by far the leader in the gaming infrastructure space, okay? So it provides an infrastructure for games to be built on top. It just came out somewhat recently with what's called the Immutable Passport, allowing you to unify all the different bloody accounts you end up having to make with all these new decentralized games all in one place. They call it the Passport, makes sense, in which you can leverage everything out of. So gotta love it. IMX is definitely the leader in this area. There are close seconds. I mean, Beam's right behind it, but in my opinion, it's irrefutable, immutable, <laughs> is going to be one of the leaders, I think, still, okay? Now, most of the supply is out. The FDB doesn't look too bad at all. Keeps all those guys quite happy. And they also recently partnered with a major, major player in this crypto space, Fly Fireblocks. Okay, so game developers can now leverage the Fireblocks platform to securely store and efficiently manage digital assets associated with game economies, NFT projects, and DeFi protocols, enhancing their oversight of holdings on immutable ZK EVM chain, which is, of course, powered by uh, you know Polygon. So here's some of the massive plays involved with Fireblocks. Okay, 6 trillion transactions have been secured. 200 million app, uh, wallets have been created. ANZ, a big bank over here. Same with NAB, BNY Mellon. Uh, where are you over here? I'm missing something. Near Protocol and Vanek. So there's a lot of uh, players here. So that's why it makes it to this list, guys. I mean, obviously, if you do some research into Immutable yourself, you'll quickly realize why it's a leader and why it'll likely do well. Now, for layer ones, I'll be honest, right? This is a top 10 video, but I had to add two in here. I literally could not do just one. And that's Near Protocol for one. Okay, Near Protocol, four and a half billion market cap. So definitely up there, all right? But keep in mind, we are very close to very low levels. Near had an all-time low of a dollar. So yeah, we're 4X up from that, but I know very little people who actually bought that. Okay, I fortunately did, just to flex, I'm sorry. But my average buy-in is about $2.60. So most people likely, I'm quite low. Most people are around the $2.50 range as far as I'm aware. So it's not too far off those levels. And again, these guys are heavily focused, not just in AI. Believe you me, they're heavily focused in AI. Okay, the, one of the co-founders, Ilya, helped create the very model of the transformer, which is a key integral part of how large language models operate. And again, he's had you know keynote speaks with, with, with the NVIDIA founder. But also, real-world assets now getting involved with this thing, right? Tokenization, okay? The present-day TVL represents a big jump from the 54 million at the beginning of 2024, making it one of the most notable blockchains as measured by tokenized asset growth. So they're partnering with RWA to XYZ, which is a coalition of all these different, um, you know, blockchains and other crypto projects like Chainlink, like Goldfinch, that are focusing on real-world asset, um, I guess, market share. This is huge. And again, also a major player in what's called account abstraction, looking to unify the entire crypto space all in a single account, doing what Immutable Passport does for the games on Immutable, but for the whole ecosystem. Truly, I think this is going to be a big narrative possibly coming up. I know I threw shade at account abstraction at the beginning of the video, but I think over time, we'll see how that a particular narrative begins to expand. And I think Nier's at the forefront nonetheless. The second coin in this area is ICP, of course. 
Hedera H bar, ICP, these two coins are my top two favorite coins of all time. ICP is an absolute discount right now. Down from about $20. I think without a shadow of a doubt, this coin's going to do well. 3.6 billion market cap. Again, don't let these high market caps, you know, kind of make you go, oh, there's no way this thing can get to 30 billion market cap. Believe you me, you're going to be surprised if this bull run truly does go through as intended. Again, great FDV because most of the supply is out. Plus, these guys are burning. Burning their tokens faster and faster every month, by the way. And also, if you have a look at their Twitter as well, the founder over here, Dominic, goes on and on all about how they're integrating AI. I've played this video before. He basically talks about how they're looking to upgrade the back end of ICP, for example, to enable things like Llama 3 to be plug and played into smart contracts, completely decentralized, with about three times the amount of space still spare to do whatever the hell else you want. Add more plugins, do whatever you need inside a smart contract. Really, really, honestly, is a step above the rest. And I think people that are ignorant to ICP because of charts looking like this are going to be woken up with a pretty rude awakening because it's not always about past trading history. People get caught up all the time scrolling through coin market cap, looking at this and sort of telling you their analysis. Oh, you know, I think coins would do well. You know, ICP when $7.70 was way back over here at 20 bucks. If we click all, yeah, I think, you know, ICP can go back up here at 400 bucks. Like, you know, you've got to be very careful listening to crypto influencers. And again, Funnily enough, coming from an influencer, I get it, right? But you must be very careful what information you're getting in. You can't look to just analyze the charts. The charts are merely just previous price action, really. If you're not doing TA on the chart, it's pretty much useless, honestly. It's what happens in the future. Fundamental and technical analysis, you got to apply. Layer twos, they're everywhere. Everyone's talking about layer twos, or at least they were. It's fizzled out now, but I believe it'll come back. And so my pick for layer two of the bull run is optimism. Okay, 1.8 billion market cap. Again, the unlock supply here is a bit shocking, but again, that's these tokens are a bit up in the air. You know, in the future, they've had their main unlock for the VCs here, so there shouldn't be a major dump, um, at least in terms of institutional investors, as far as I can see so far. But this coin, I think, has a lot of legs to stand on, right? Previously, it was $4.70. And if you come over here, they've got some massive updates, most notably Sony's new blockchain. Yes, Sony, right? The guys who created bloody PlayStation, these guys are creating their own network called Sonium, and they're using Optimism's tech stack to build it. Now, that in itself is quite impressive, but usually that doesn't mean all that much for the project, right? Well, where's the demand? If the demand comes through from Sonium, how's it going to impact Optimism? Well, it's part, with this, of the Optimism superchain, uh, you know, indicated networks, as well as Base, as well as WorldCoin's world chain. Huge. Now, why this is important, you can see them all here. All right, these are just all the super chain connected, like if you will, layer three um, networks underneath Optimism or you know parallel to it because they're also layer twos, is that they need to, when doing governance, buy the opt Optimism token. Now you can see here, 15,000 Ethereum, Ethereum has been collected due to that fact, due to the fact that they've built themselves into this network. And you can see here, collected revenue in the last 30 days was 79 in a, in a bear situation, mind you. It's insane. So they need the optimism token. That's why it's so bullish to be connected to this. And this is growing faster and faster. More, The bigger the network, the more these applications are joining in, the more are incentivized to come and join in as well. So in my opinion, guys, optimism, I think will be the, one of the leading layer twos of the bull run hands down. What about interoperability? Well, this is an area where I think it's highly contested because there is new projects coming out and no one really knows what the best interoperability project will really be because they're all pretty much the same, but it's looking at the metrics, the one really situation where you should be looking at the metrics for a coin for the unique aspect, and that's of course with these coins, the bridges essentially, right? Now, Wormhole's my choice. Yes, I of course own Wormhole as I do pretty much every other coin on this list. However, Wormhole is down quite a lot, leading a lot of people to be quite unhappy with it, okay? Because it launched in a very bearish situation and it just kept getting more and more bearish. And the coin really hasn't felt like it's held itself. It's held up pretty well at 20 cents, I must admit, but people are upset with it. Guys, it's crypto. What do you expect? If this coin launched in a bull situation, the chart would be the inverse and everyone would love the coin, okay? Give it time to breathe. Let her cook, as they say, right? And it is a she, apparently, right? So 500 mil market cap, one of the lowest on this list, of course. Now, the unlock supply, we'll get into this in a second, has a lot of people a little bit disgruntled. So the FDB doesn't look all that good. But what does look good is the metrics, is have a look at the bridge. The bridge itself has over 1 billion transactions, 183 messages in the last 24 hours, and the volume is almost $47 billion, okay? 
The reason why I've added this is because it is pretty much almost the de facto, at least was the de facto, in and out of the Solana ecosystem, okay? There are others now, but it is heavily tied to Solana, which means it's going to be better off for the bull run because the Solana ecosystem is very, very good for this cycle. And if we come over here, they've also got a crap load of ecosystem projects already built. They call them interchain applications, essentially built in the middle of Wormhole and other networks, allowing people to pretty much do awesome things pretty instantly across different networks. One of those applications is USDC's CCTP, which essentially is just allowing people to do pretty cool DeFi things, right? Like borrow and lend, create DEXs, and also yield farm pretty well instantly across different networks, but for USDC. So that's all great, well said and done, but what about the unlock schedule, guys? Well, again, this is freaking a lot of people out because they look at the FDV and they panic. Again, FDV takes into consideration all the tokens when all the tokens are out, and in this case, 2029, which is ridiculous. Why would you even think about considering that? We're not going to be selling in 2029, and we're selling at latest December 2025 latest so in this case the next big unlock coming up over here is around about when is this March 2025 okay but if again you remove all of the people who actually aren't going to be selling their tokens like the ecosystem grants the foundation and treasury the guardian nodes and the community and launch because they already have all their tokens you're left with a very small slither or at least a less intimidating figure than you would previously these are the guys that will sell if it is applicable to do so if they're in profit enough and don't see the project going up too much they will sell and if they all come together in a big kumbaya moment it'll tank the price but that's highly unlikely they don't usually collude like that if ever that's actually market manipulation and they can get really screwed for that. So in this case, I don't know what the massive concern is about, guys. Make sure you go through the token release schedule and read about who these people are. Are the Guardian nodes, i.e. these people, likely to sell when they get their tokens? Well, if you read who they are, not likely, okay? So that's a very important thing to learn in tokenomics. Don't listen to these people telling you that uh, these unlocks are the be-all and end-all of a coin. Most of the fear, most of the sell pressure comes before the event, from people being fearful, the actual event very rarely has a large impact on the price. Now for DeFi, DeFi pretty much encompasses real world assets, but I have to make a special mention here to one of my all time favorite DeFi coins right now, at least Aerodrome Finance. This is an application built on base. It is single-handedly the main de facto DEX of base. It's just focus on base, forget getting other networks involved with base or nothing, all right? Which is why I like it, because we can draw comparisons to PancakeSwap from the last cycle that from this point in time, like 25, 30x. So we have a lot to go on, and I think base is probably more hyped up this bull run than uh, the network built on, uh, underneath uh, PancakeSwap, which is the BNB network, right? Binance. So current market cap, 300 million, okay? Most of the tokens are out, which is a good sign to see, or again, half of them or so. These are unlocked over time, though. This is a really good project because actually in the last seven days, well, this was about a week ago, it literally had more revenue than even Ethereum. It was the number one generating revenue, at least, project in the entire crypto space. That's saying a lot, okay? Also, it is clawing the entire volume on base away from Uniswap now up here, I think it's like 80 something percent, right? 87 percent. Insane. So again, the de facto DEX of base, which is good, of course. And you can see over here in within the DEXs in the whole entire industry, uh, these guys were at $300 million in wrapped ETH with USDC, um, even compared to, again, multi-chain applications like PancakeSwap and Uniswap. So again, these guys are just focused on base. And I like that because honestly, people do end up gravitating towards what they believe to be like the the dark horse, right? The one that's just focusing on base. All the guys who love base single-handedly will obviously like Aerodrome by default. And you can see over here, they have the highest, the highest, in the, at least the last week, volume pool in crypto. Where is it? $1.55 billion in volume. That's just, that's going for any pool, not this specific pool, in crypto. Wrapped ETH USDC. So you can't deny how impactful it looks like Aerodrome is going to be for the bull run for DeFi. That's why I'm hedging into it. And that's why I know a lot of people are as well. Not to mention, but they pass all of the fees over to the people who are, uh, you know, vote or, or essentially doing the governance, right? Collecting the VE governance token. All of the fees generated are given to 
governance holders, essentially, which is awesome to know. It's for the people, by the people. Let's talk data availability slash modularity, right? This is a very, very important part, I think, of the bull run we've seen so far. And the winner of this, in my opinion, is Celestia. Celestia, 800 mil market cap. We've seen it much higher than this. $4 currently right now has gone as high as $22. This chart doesn't show it, but we're pretty much back down a lows, guys. We're at really low levels right now. Now you can see here that there is a fair bit of token unlock to still occur, and I'll get to that momentarily, but the ecosystem is big. There is a lot of buzz around it. A lot of these large, important and influential uh, applications rely on Celestia, like Alt Layer, like Arbitrum's Layer 3 um, Arbitrum Orbit over here. If I come down, Bearer Chain is also using it. Eclipse, a new Solana base, Layer 2 as well. Hyperlane, Interoperability, Bridge, Manta Network, and the list goes on. You guys can see this massive list here. But the thing is, a lot of people are concerned about the unlocks. This is the one case, single-handedly, that yes, this will likely cause a, a sell-off. Now, I'm starting to think that this sell-off, you know, poised for uh, October, so the 1st of October, or 10th of October, rather, is likely going to not cause a crash if the prices don't continue going up. People will sell before the event, but the actual VCs, if we get rid of everything but the VCs, these three, it's most of it, right? They will likely look to sell when they've made substantial profit. Now, keep in mind, these guys have actually ended up getting into Celestia quite cheap, very cheap, actually. There might be a sell-off. Just remember, if you believe in the project, I definitely do. That is a chance to buy more. And again, I think a 10X is definitely on the cards from today's price. What we could find happen is like what happened with Optimism, funnily enough, way back when it did the same thing. It more than doubled its supply entirely to VCs, right? What happened was on the day, there was a minor uh, negative 3% drop. Most people sold beforehand. This is all retail panic selling beforehand. But the day itself did nothing, moved sideways for a few days, and then it dropped 35%. That was definitely VC selling. Then it recovered, and then it was all felt, you know, all good from there. So again, depending on when the unlocks happen, at what point in the market, bullish, bearish, or otherwise, we'll likely find something like this occur. But again, I believe it will definitely recover. And lastly, Oracle. Now, you might get pissed off at me for not including Chainlink here, but I feel like the choice in this case is a little bit better, not because Chainlink can't easily 10x, I think it definitely can, and it isn't a lot of good narratives, but this coin, Pith Network, I've chosen here because I think it can do well and truly over a 10x here, and it is still quite a large project. It's also on Solana as well, and as we'll see in a second, it is growing tremendously quickly, okay? So 27 cents, this went as high as $1.10 or $1.20, or I believe no problem, it can go back up there again. A lot of the sell pressure came from the panic, like we've seen before, from token unlocks, people getting a little bit worried. But needless to say, there is nothing to worry about with the token unlocks for this coin. And the KPI sheet's pretty incredible as well, okay? So they have $8 billion in total value secured. Now, if we compare that to Chainlink at $19 billion, it's pretty incredible, right? Pretty much half. This says $7 billion over here, or rather $4 billion, but this is obviously outdated because these guys are adding network after network. You can see here, this only shows about, let's just say 60, if that, 60 connected networks. We're over here, over 76 connected blockchains. So it's a little bit outdated. And this also shows um, only 211 protocols secured versus Chainlink's 404. But of course, given they have more connected networks, it's a lot more protocols that are secured. So in my opinion, if you have a look at some of these KPIs, it's pretty incredible how fast they're growing. So I definitely think that, and the ecosystem is pretty massive as well. Um, given that who's behind them, right? Some of these publishers are very, very large people in not just crypto, by the way, but the real world, including TradingView, the guys I just showed you the chart. It's, uh, I think, poised to do very well. So guys, that's going to do today's video. I hope you have enjoyed. Let me know if you like the fast pace, by the way, because I know a lot of you guys kind of like me going into detail into each coin more than I have here. A lot of you guys are like, cut the crap just tell me what coins you like and call it a day so again keep that feedback coming through i'm always trying to improve guys talk to you soon take good care bye bye